Hello everybody, this is Moses from Out There Gardens. Do just a little walkabout. We had a all day rain yesterday. The sun's going down right now. Beautiful. Um, Lulu's waiting on something to come over that fence. We had all day rain yesterday. I'm gonna walk around and show you the fruit production. Uh, we'll start with the almonds. This is almost ready for me to eat, really, or my family to eat. We like to eat them green, as you can see right here. And it just goes everywhere. Just, I don't know how many, probably, probably 300 or more, maybe 400 almonds. Some aren't gonna size up though. So those most likely were pollinated late or the flowers open late. And if you look closely, I'm going to show you something pretty cool right now. You see how it almost looks like a peach? Let me see if I can go to the peach really quick so you can remember. Um, you can graft an almond to a peach tree or an apricot or nectarine or plum. So I can have, instead of this apricot, nectarine, plum, and peach tree, I could have it with all those plus almond. But, yeah, there's no point in that. It would just be cool. But do you see how the resemblance... Here's a Babcock white peach. And there's the almond. See how they look alike? So let's go take a look at, well, there's a Babcock white peach um, throughout all these, basically this, the four scaffolding, one, two, three, four. I gotta get used to seeing myself in the, see, this is something you need to prune out. You see how there's two and one? That's just wasting time. Don't even don't even waste your time. That's just wasting energy. Get rid of it. But it's just full. I have to do a lot of thinning. Let's see if the nectarine is ready. Or I mean not ready, but I uh, it just it's it's not produced yet, the little baby fruit. I could see almost, but not really. Let's go take a look at the plum, which I'm pretty sure has produced something. Let's get some of the flowers up. Well, you can see them right here. See them right there, Santa Rosa plum. So it's gonna be throughout. So not yet, time to thin this out. Um, but getting there getting there. I like to thin it out to this, everything the size of my thumbnail. Once it gets to the size of my thumbnail, you see the size here, then I like to thin out. Other than that, it's too small. You could really damage the fruit you want to keep. Here's the apricot. So you, you can imagine it just keeps going that direction. But once again, whoops. Now there's some people, let me use another hand. Whoops. See, I'm not used to that. Hmm, I'm hold it like this. There's some people that want to break it off like that. So, and then keep the other side. But you can see there's a little bit of an opening right around here. You see the opening? So it's kind of shaky. Maybe it'll take, maybe it won't. You might get infested by insects. Something close to watch. But this is about the time. See how it's almost it's the size of my thumb? The apricots? My thumbnail? This is the time where I would thin, but not right now. All right, let's walk over to the Flavor Delight Aprium. Is Lulu gonna show us the way? No editing. Just loving it. Especially this picture in picture, I don't wanna edit too much. Let's see the heavenly white nectarine, anything? Let me look around while you look at the flowers. Uh, it just, it's barely peeking through. You can see right there, heavenly white nectarine, bleach white flesh. Okay, now I already thinned out this fruit. This is the Flavor Delight Aprium. Um, you can just see how much production it is. I'll go up this branch. It'll just keep going. 
Um, I would say, I would say, you can't really tell now when it, when it colors up, the fruit colors up, then you can really tell uh, the, the how much fruit there is. I mean, just imagine every branch is like that. Now I still have to do some more thinning. I have to do some more thinning still. Um, but it's going to be a good year on the Aprium again. I would suggest anyone that hasn't purchased an Aprium of any kind, I would purchase one. Now see, you can see the size of all the Apriums. See how they're big like a um, marble, I would say, or a little bit, almost a ping pong ball size. You see this little one here, not, not sizing up. That's something I would thin out, but I'll thin out later on. Oops, sorry. I'll thin out later on, see another small one. After the film, after recording. Uh, I don't see anything. They haven't produced yet the prune. There's the apple. The passion fruit's doing really, really well. I gotta make sure all the stuff on the bottom is not growing out. Uh, I don't want any um, problems on the base. So this is pretty insane here. Again, this is the flat peach. Uh, I'll show you the production. So every one of these flowers that you see is going to be a fruit and most likely will not drop off. Uh, let me show you some better ones. You see all this? You see all of them? Those are all gonna be flat peaches. Saturn peach, donut peach. Let me get a better view on this one. All of them. And they won't fall off either by themselves. So you see this is, we got a three and one in a way. One, two, and a three. One or two of these have to go. That's later on. This will take me, all those clusters you see are peaches. So in this view right here, within my ha hand's reach, uh, 30 peaches just right there. Now let me, so keep this in mind right here, right? Now imagine that size basically of my hand, that whole tree all around has to be thinned. So I would guess 500, 600 fruit. Maybe more. Here's a double. I'll show you a double. Got to get rid of these. Do not have doubles. Here's another double. Get rid of those. What happens is, I, um, I try it a couple times just to keep it and see what happens. Um, it'll cause a lesion in the middle of them when they crack and separate and... Uh, I was going to say Roach Hotel, but uh, uh, Earwig, Pincher Bug Hotel. Boy, oh boy, will they settle in and love life. Okay, um, Sapote doing okay, the white Sapote. This is Subel. Uh, still flowering. Not that big of growth on the fruit yet. There's some fruit but they're very 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 minuscule you see some of them right there the globes with the little wrinkles those are fruit and the ones with the uh still with the yellow not opened up yet those are the flowers so here is the this is this is incredible this is incredible i'll get back on this one a little bit this is a you can see how bright green everything is from the rain I'm trying to look where I'm stepping. I'm walking, walking backwards because I don't want to stand on a Lulu landmine if you know what I'm talking about. So right here is a ultra dwarf, which means easily pruned. It doesn't mean it's going to stay that height. Easily pruned to six feet or under. You could easily prune it. Um, uh, ultra dwarf, weeping, 
Santa Rosa plum. So it's a weeping tree, beautiful tree. It's gonna, all the limbs are gonna come down, but it's gonna have fruit. Not many trees are weeping, fruiting trees. I mean, there are weeping trees, excuse me, but not, not ones that fruit, especially stone fruit. So I'll show you a crazy cluster. Now imagine, okay, I'll go top view. Imagine all this, look at the color, everyone. Imagine all that looks like this. You see all those fruit? Now imagine all those branches. Everything is that. I'm going to spend hours thinning fruit, I swear, this year. That's a good thing. I'd rather be thinning fruit than holding on to the few ones I get. Okay, now the flavor, the generic... The green sour Persian plum still hasn't shown anything much. As you can see right here. That's as far as they can get. There's still a flower, so it's a beautiful tree. Uh, I'm going to keep it this size. I have a base of it with a um, parsley, excuse me, just to make it pretty. And I'm going to eat it as well. Um, but I want to keep it this size because I don't want to... I don't want to encroach onto the apple or the dabble dandy pluot, which we're going to talk about right now. Now, with the dapple dandy pluot, uh, if you're a subscriber to me and you remember last year, where there'll be a cluster, maybe I'll link it in the video if I remember. Um, there's a like a cluster of grapes, like just hanging of like eight or nine humongous dappled dandy pluots just holding on to one tiny little limb this is such a tough plant and so um giving i guess you could say so the harvest is huge and i'll show you that in a second here but something i want to show you first now we're still in the, we're, i don't even know if, we're not even in spring yet officially you see how when i back up let me back up some more do you see how it almost looks like is it cousin it in Adam's family that's all hair? If not, I'll hear it in the comments. But it's just like, it's all like covered. You can't see the bark. That's a good thing. There's no whitewashing needed. Yes, I did it on the bottom. But all the limbs in the top will not be sunburned because it's covered by leaves. You will not, when the summer comes, this bark here, you won't even see it. These clusters of leaves will be full. You won't even see bark. You'll see it. Everything will look like this. You see how you can't see the bark? Now let me show you the production. One moment, let me show the chance. Okay, I wanna show you how crazy this can get. Look at every, every bump. You see this bump? That bark that's bumping out? Every little bump has fruit. The fruit here, there. Every one of these is a cluster of five to 10. And you have to look deep. Watch. Look how much fruit. And we're talking about, I don't know, two, two and a half feet long limb. Maybe, um, let's see. Let's, let me do it. I mean, if you're hanging around looking at this beautiful foliage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. 100 fruit you heard me right not all are going to stay on a lot of them are going to fall off but a hundred fruit on this tiny limb and now imagine every limb isn't that insane so another one you want to get is a pluot i'm going to show you the grenade flavor grenade pluot here in a moment and just keep going you know here it is from the top angle. Just keep going it's everywhere. Everywhere is fruit. Okay, now we're gonna go over to um, the flavor grenade. It's coming around right now. Hi, Lulu. Lulu. Come here, Lulu. She doesn't want to come. So, this is a flavor grenade pluot. Let me step back. It's topped out at about six and a half feet, like everything else. 
And you can see already, you can see while I'm going in, you can see the dead um, flower petals. See all those dangling, the brown? Now imagine, that's just a, I don't know, 10 inch limb. All this keeps going. Hundred, uh, thousand maybe. I would say a thousand, but they're not all going to make it. But they have great potential. If they're sizing up, they're all sizing up. And they look bright green and healthy. They're not yellow. Yellow means unpollinated. That means they'll fall off immediately. Now, if you want to help yourself, but see, some have fallen. You see right here? If you want to help yourself out and not thin one little one by one little one at a time, just kick the bottom. Let's see if anything happens. Yep. Just kick the bottom and those little ones that really shouldn't be long anymore fall off. Oh, still flowering. Interesting. Avocado just profusely flowering like crazy. This is a Mexicola. Every tip of the branch is flowering. I'll back up so you can see. So every branch tip from top to bottom is flowering. We'll see what happens. Here's the donut from this angle. See all the fruit? So nothing but Wood chips, that's a fake snake to help uh, fight critters away, like squirrels and stuff. Uh, it used to work, and now they kind of learned. And Lulu found something. Lulu, what are you eating? Whatever. Um, used to help, but now I think they caught on. Um, wood chips and foliar fed with seaweed and fish. So this is my daughter's early Alberta. First year in the ground. I do not want to keep all this fruit on because there's probably around 50 fruit. Let me get down. There's probably around 50 fruit on this tree. Lulu found something. She's crunching on something. I bet you it's a peanut. Squirrels plant peanuts in my yard. So I don't want to keep all this fruit because I need this tree to grow. Raspberries haven't flowered yet, but looking beautiful. Blueberries are doing extremely well. The ju jujube, this is a leaf variety. Finally, uh, coming out of dormancy, you can see it's about, I don't know, almost eight feet tall. Lulu, what are you crunching on? God, you freak me out sometimes. Rhubarb is looking really healthy. And let's see, what else? What was I going to say? What was I going to do? One moment. Tamarillo is doing amazingly well. Look at the color. Look at the sheen. There's one. There's another one over here. Now, here's two blueberry plants. I planted in the same hole. Uh, I didn't, I just dug a hole and put two plants in there, right over here. Been there, I don't know, four years now, I think. There's three more over there. And then there's three over here, okay? So let me show you the bountiful blue uh, foliage, supposedly said to be, which I, I agree, I suppose, uh, the best uh, leaf color of any blueberry. So let me show you the color of the leaves. Look how pretty they are. Look how bright. The purple, the maroon, green, bluish. And that's a misty. And that's a sunshine blue. And here's the parsley. Look at that crazy stuff. Let me show you how the blueberries are doing on these plants. Don't know why these plants do the best, but they do when over here. It is so much easier to film this way instead of worrying about edits left and right. So here we go. You can see the production. Uh, I'll do a close up. See the production? This is a misty. So was this. This is all misty. And this is a sunshine blue, a sunshine blue. So keep in mind, this is an acidic loving plant. Yeah, I'll show it like this. This is an acidic loving plant surrounded by alkaline loving plants. Um, 
Zatar plants, Timorous Piccata, Oregonum Syricum, Summer Savory, which can handle seven. But some of these, like Timorous Piccata or Oregonum Syricum, they want uh, eight or higher. But yet, this 4.5 to 5.0 acidity or pH level loving plant will produce like crazy. It's all in nature, everybody. It's all in nature. Here's my salad box that I made for my wife. Peppers that I purchased. Basil that I purchased. Peppers. Another pepper. Uh, she's afraid that um, we won't be able to get fresh food. So, and, and she knows I don't grow lettuce. So I just bought uh, pak choy and some lettuce. They didn't look that great when I purchased them. But, you know, foliar feeding. Look at that. And look at the crunch. Amazing, huh? Asparagus is doing very lovely. Got to pull back some. Here's the pink lady. Always flowers first. Pink lady. Used to be yellow transparent, but pink lady... Takes off. This is a graft that I did. I have a pink lady tree, but this is a graft of pink lady. And then, you know, other varieties. Here's new um, grafts I did. Oh, this is a, my favorite apple. Now, I did this just because of the rain. The black tape started unraveling. So I just wrapped it with that pretty much a rubber cord. I don't know what you, how you call it, but this is a Macintosh. Macintosh, Macintosh, and a Macintosh. So hopefully one of those three make it. That's all I need. All I need is one. Because once it grows, I could just cut from it and cut from it and make more. Uh, this is a yellow trans... This is a Fuji. Yellow transparent. That was grafted right here. See the Y or the V? Um... What else? The pink lady. And I think that was it on this tree. Okay, then I did more. Another variety I bought from Fedco Seeds. This variety, I was told, sorry. I was told to purchase because it's one of the best tasting. Is called King David. So this is a King David. Another one. And another one. This is a Gala. Grafted right here. Fuji. This tree is a Granny Smith. That's a Fuji. I just got it from here and just grafted it over here. And this right here is a Honey Crisp. All right, everybody. Oops, the hand. So here's a Staghorn Sumach. Uh, it's a male and a female, so you can see different color leaves. Uh, very delicious. It's a spice like a sour berry or a sour cluster of berries that you add to, like my channel name, Zatar. You add it to the Zatar to make it a little bit sour in a pot. It's quite invasive, so be careful. Here's my bay tree. Now with this tree, or excuse me, tree, my bay baby... Um, I actually love the flowers before they open. They're the most po potent. The leaves are nothing compared to the flowers. Once it flowers and it doesn't open yet, that has the most oil and flavor and scent in it of all. You want to collect the flowers. People pay good money, by the way. Like restaurants pay good money for those flowers as well. So here's the Cherimoya doing very well again. I'm just very impressed by this rootstock that uh, is about two years old look at that pretty sky is about two years old so if it wasn't if it didn't die back over there and then i moved it last year over here uh, this would already probably be about eight feet tall but it will get to that size uh, come this year so this is just rootstock so let that establish itself if it produces good fruit and it makes it, I'd rather just to keep that fruit than trying the albumpo and chaffee I've done in the past. Um, but if it 
If it doesn't produce, then I could always graft some other varieties. Now we're in the front yard. Here is the pistachio right over here. So this, I don't know what's what. This is a male, I'm assuming, and this is the female. As you can see right here. Pistachios and almonds are all around here. About a, millions and millions and millions of these trees are around here. So it is pushing growth. Here's a beautiful fig. Ville de Bordeaux. Just producing beautiful shiny clusters. I mean, look at this. Isn't that amazing? New leaves. Here's the Stella. You can hear my baby in the background maybe crying. Mommy's inside though. But uh, here's the Stella cherry. You can see how much it's producing. Look at the craziness, huh? Isn't that crazy? Look at all that. Look at that. Amazing. And she's really crying. <laughs> I had an aloe vera in a pot, so I planted it here. I took out my Spanish lavender out of here because it was just causing too many bees and my wife got stung by a bee and I, my son's afraid of it, of the bees, of course. So I, I removed it so I could put um, something else and I just chose aloe vera. So here is the Italian prune, one of them. I really opened it up, I pruned it open so I can have a lot of production of flowers and it worked because last year was horrible. It's I think three years in the ground now, I believe. And it did horribly last year, really bad, sickly. And now it's just doing really well. So I hope to get a lot of uh, delicious fruit from this tree. And really it's for the shade. So the pears are doing really well. And uh, I just uh, really love this variety, grow straight up. I don't want any outward growth. Wow, that looked like a bug on the screen, but that was way up in the air. That was a bird. But, like I said, I don't want any outward growth. I need vertical growth. And I'll just stay like this and just tell you all happy gardening. And I hope all of you are safe. Be healthy. Eat fresh and in season as much as possible. And grow your own food. Happy gardening.